Thanks to HelloFresh for supporting The Bright Sessions. Take advantage of HelloFresh's special offer for 2019. Get $80 off your first month by going to HelloFresh.com slash therapy80 and use the code therapy80. Before we get started, two quick announcements. There's a new podcast out from a few members of The Bright Sessions, an actual play D&D podcast called ARCs. Find it wherever you get your podcasts. Also, I'll be in Nashville May 31st through June 2nd at PodX. Go to PodX.com for more info, and I hope to see a bunch of you there. But first, another bonus episode of The Bright Sessions. Patient number two, age 15. Session one. Appointment was made by the patient's father in accordance with a juvenile court ruling. Evidently, someone at the AM was contacted by someone in local law enforcement and passed along my card. The patient has apparently had several conflicts with authority figures in school and at home over destruction of property, and when asked why she does this, the patient maintains that the fires are some sort of compulsive habit. I suspect there is more involved. A compulsive arsonist is one thing, but I have a suspicion that that's a misunderstanding of something a little more, well, strange and unusual. Hopefully I can help. Hi, Rory, come on in. Okay. Would you like to sit? I don't... Uh, your couch looks brand new, and I don't want to ruin it. It's all right, Rory. Couches don't stay that color forever. And it's bound to get a mark or two sometime, I don't mind. Okay. So, Rory, do you know why you're here today? Because the judge said I had to. Right. Any other reasons? Because my dad doesn't trust me, doesn't believe me, and I know you won't either. Why don't we start at the beginning? The outbursts. Yes. You're not the first therapist he's brought me to, you know. None of them believed me either. Well, I'm a specialist. I'm not like other doctors. And I'm hoping you'll give me a chance. What makes you so different? We've got the next hour to find out, don't we? Why don't you tell me about your father? He thinks it's something I can control. Like, it's that easy. Like, I can just say, don't let it out, Rory, and that's the end of it. But I can't. I just... He doesn't get it. He doesn't know what it feels like. What does it feel like? What? What does an outburst feel like, Rory? In your own words. You won't get it either. I'm here to try anyway. That's my job. I don't know if I can describe it. Take your time. It's this feeling in my head. Like a, a, like a pressure in my head. Like something pressing on my temples from the inside out. And it's like a tingling in my arms and my hands. Like I have to shake them out. Like, like my hands are about to sneeze. That doesn't make sense. This is stupid. I promise you it's not. Can I ask you a favor? And it may be a hard one, but if we're going to continue, I need you to really try. Yeah, whatever. Okay. The favor is, I need you to continue our session today under the assumption that I believe you. What? What do you mean? I need you to assume that I believe you. When we talk, when you tell me what you're feeling, I believe you. Doesn't matter how ridiculous it sounds when you're describing it, your experience is the only one that matters here. So, I believe you. Do you think you can keep that in mind for me? Can you assume that I will believe you? I, um, I guess so. No one, 
no one's ever really said anything like that to me before. <laughs> it's a little weird. I can work with weird. So, your hands need to sneeze. What? Oh, yeah. So it's like a building pressure in my head and then my hands, like, need to sneeze or whatever and then I wave my hands and there's, you know, an outburst. And then it feels better. Or I don't. And it doesn't. Keep going. Tell me about that. Well, it's the same as a sneeze, kind of. You know, have you ever felt like you had to sneeze and then you can't? You try, like, tickling your nose or staring at a bright light, but it just sits there on the tip of your nose. And it's, like, it's hard to think about anything else. Doesn't matter what you're doing, now the sneeze trapped in your nose is the only thing you can think about. And the pressure just builds up, and it's so overwhelming. Or no, maybe it's like you really have to sneeze, but you don't have a tissue. So you paw around looking for tissues, knocking over stuff, and you just have to run away from the table before you get snot all over dinner. It's like that, but in my hands. And with fire. Yeah. Why fire, Rory? I don't know. It's not like I picked it. It just happens. <sighs> May I ask you why you carry a source of fuel around with you? <laughs> You're talking about the lighter, right? Yes. I'd think the first step to stopping the outburst would be to stop carrying a fire source around with you. Make a clean break. Look, Dr. Bright. Is that the same one? I thought, um... I was led to believe. No, yeah, the cops confiscated that one. Which is a shame, because I really liked that one. My grandpa gave it to me. It was engraved and everything. No, I got this one from... from the gas station. <clears throat> Hard to find one without, like, a huge skull printed on it or whatever, so... I just went with blank. Here. Look. Smell it. Oh, it's... Empty. Just an empty lighter. No fuel. But why? Honestly, because it gets me in less trouble this way. Right now, people just think I'm lighting fires like some firebug. Could you imagine what they'd think if I didn't carry a lighter on me? Jeez, they might start believing the truth, and I, they might try to... <laughs> Rory, it's all right. You, you can go ahead. No, Dr. Bright. It's uh, fine. I can wait Please, until... Please, Rory, I insist. Let it out. Just uh, away from the file cabinet, if, if you're able. Feel better? Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks. Of course. You're not... You're not freaking out? Nothing I haven't seen before. Awesome! So yeah, the lighter helps. Stops people from asking questions I don't really know how to answer. Right. Of course. I imagine that's preferable in public, or at school, for privacy's sake. Right. Exactly. So then, what about your father? Rory, you're a smart kid. I imagine you had to know we were going to talk about this. Sure, yeah. I know. That's the first trick in the shrink handbook, right? Get them talking about their parents. It's on page seven, right on top in bold text. Wait, there's really a handbook? No, Rory, uh, that's what we shrinks call a joke. Oh. <laughs> oh, right. Sorry. 
tell me about the outbursts and your dad. I mean, he hates them. He hates that I'm always burning stuff in the house, I guess. I pay good money for these walls and every scorch mark weakens the frame, blah, blah, stuff like that. He's in construction, so, yeah. What does he think about the lighter? Well, I mean, he knows it's a fake. He does? Yeah, why? When you said he didn't believe you, I assumed... Well, I mean, he's kind of a jerk, but he's not an idiot. He's seen me have outbursts in rooms with no flames. Plus, he already knew about people with superpowers and stuff from my mom. Um, your mother is an atypical? Is that what it's called? I don't know. Her stomach acid is really corrosive. It can, like, eat through wood and ceramic and stuff. But it's also really bad for her throat. So she takes medication for it. She had to go to a special doctor's office and everything. I just, um... Why? Oh, no, it's nothing. I just... I wasn't... That wasn't included in the file I was given. Should it have been? Her powers didn't really, you know, come up in court. No, of course. You're right. Sorry, where did we leave off? So, your father knows about atypicals. Uh... Yeah. So he knows about the outbursts. But I think he thinks it's something I can just stop. Like how my mom stops spitting acid. Because she's on medication. Yeah. So would it be safe to assume... He doesn't say it outright. That's not really how he talks. How he thinks about it. But yeah. I think he wants to put me on medication too. Okay. And how do you feel about that? Well, I'm afraid, I guess. You're afraid of your father? N no, not like, not like that. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying it right. Okay. All right, Rory. Take your time. <sighs> Can we, um... I'm sorry, can, can we come back to my dad later? I I don't know if I have the right words right now. Sure. Okay. We won't push it off forever, but let's talk about something else and we'll come back, okay? Okay. Thanks. So, what do we talk about? How about school? Okay. Do you like it? It's okay, I guess. I'm not a great student. Out of class a lot. Distracting. Some classes are better than others. When they let me go to classes instead of in-school suspension or whatever. Which classes are your favorites? Um, I really like chemistry these days. My teacher, Mr. Zazo, does a lot of labs, so we get to cause chemical reactions and stuff, and I do like those. Plus, sometimes during the labs, we're using Bunsen burners or other heat sources, so a lot of times that's the only time in the day I can let out an outburst and no one really notices. It, like, gets me through the day sometimes. And there was one time I was having a really rough day, and I think Zazo had another lesson planned, but he canceled it and made up a lab on the spot instead. And he called me up to the head of the class to assist with the example. We did that thing where... You heat up some potassium chlorate and drop in some candy, and it spits out all these pink sparks. And he kept, you know, having trouble with the heat source or something, so he let me come in and fix it. Sounds like Mr. Zazo really looks out for you. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure he thinks I'm just a firebug, but he thinks he's giving my destructive tendencies a creative outlet, and I don't know, it's a nice gesture. At least he's trying to be helpful, you know? As opposed to, like, my English teacher, Mrs. Krakowski. She has a lot of class discussions about the reading in her class, you know, Socratic discussions or whatever it's called, which I'm not a huge fan of. When I read books, I, I sort of like to stew in my own thoughts about it. And hearing everyone else talk about it just kind of makes it muddy in my brain. And I spend a lot of time in class keeping the outbursts in so I don't interrupt the discussion, so I sit there breathing heavily with my eyes closed. So she just thinks I'm sleeping, I think. 
or I'll sometimes I'll turn a book back in and the pages are singed. So she doesn't really like me. So I'm not doing really well in her class. Do you find that classes tend to go better for you if you like your teacher? Uh, yeah, I guess so. I never really thought about it like that. I always figured the stuff we learn in class is just facts, right? So if I have trouble processing the facts, I won't do as well in the class. But yeah, I guess English wasn't always my worst subject, just this year. I don't know. School isn't just a list of facts and figures to memorize. It's supposed to teach you how to think, how to process information in the wider world. And you're getting old enough now, Rory, that you have started to lay the foundation of the way you think about the world. So, to me, it makes perfect sense that if your teacher is someone whose teaching style or personality fundamentally conflicts with the way you view the world, that you might struggle to reach that teacher's standard of excellence. But I don't think that makes you a bad student. Right. I'd agree with that. I end up in detention and stuff a lot for the outbursts, but I have pretty good grades on the whole. So, then, Rory? Ah, damn. You got me. Let's maybe talk about how your dad talks about atypicals. And compare that to the way you think about your own abilities. Gotta say, Dr. Bright, that was some pretty slick therapy foo. That's why they pay me the big bucks, as they say. Fine. Yeah, okay. So, my dad knows about atypicals? Yeah. He's known since he and my mom were in college together. They were dating when her power manifested. They were at a party, and my mom had too much to drink, I guess. And she threw up in someone's toilet, and the toilet just kind of melted. But but she kind of had a handle on it until she was pregnant with me. She says something changed, and it got a lot worse, and it didn't get better once I was born. I don't remember, obviously, but they told me she was in the hospital a lot for the first year I was alive. And then they put her on these meds, and I guess that was that. The only reason I really know about it is because when I was like four, right before they got divorced, we were on vacation in Orlando and my mom forgot her meds at home and then got food poisoning from some seafood restaurant. And she kind of destroyed the bathroom. They kicked us out of the hotel and we ended up staying at some motel that smelled like old cigarettes. That must have been difficult. Yeah. And while all this was going on, my dad wasn't really like in it with her he'd pick her up from the hospital but I don't know what kind of hospital it was because he couldn't really stay with her I guess and then they broke up and as far as my dad ever saw she was sick and then she was better they don't really talk much anymore and I talk about it all with her but not really with him you know the meds sort of killed her sense of taste and smell but she doesn't want him to see that it's affecting her I guess So maybe he thinks that atypical abilities are like a disease? Something you can just medicate away? And I guess he must wonder why I wouldn't want to do that. If the solution to what's making our lives difficult is available, why I wouldn't be the first in line to take it. Is that how you see your abilities? As a burden, making your life more difficult? No. I just think people need to... I don't know, fucking chill out or whatever. Oh, I'm so, I'm sorry. Is it is it cool to say fucking here? I don't. Uh, yes, it's okay. Okay, but yeah, no, I don't think they're a burden. It just feels, I don't know, natural, like a natural part of me. And like when I can let it out, it feels good, you know. It feels right. But people, I don't know, they freak out around fire. They get mad when their stuff burns a little. And it's just stuff, you know? I mean, I get it's personal property, blah, blah, but it's all just stuff. You can replace stuff. But so then I tried to keep it inside, you know? Keep it contained. 
but I get so exhausted trying not to have outbursts that when I get home and I finally let it out, it's bigger. More. The flames, you mean? Yeah, and and not just the size of it. It feels wilder. More erratic? That's the word, right? It's all over the place? Yeah, exactly. The fire goes all over the place. But I think... I, I think if more people knew it was something I couldn't really control, th- that it's just a, a part of me. And then I could let it out in smaller doses throughout the day and it wouldn't get so... Explosive? <sighs> you see what you did there. But, yeah. Have you ever told your dad about that? Yeah. But, I don't know, he... He doesn't listen. He's got this tunnel vision about it. Where do you think that comes from? I have no idea. You're the shrink, not me. Indulge me. Well, I mean, his wife had this ability that made her really sick. Like, it affected her daily life and stuff. That's hard. That is hard. And then she went and found medicine for it, and her powers were gone, and she was back to normal. I mean, there were side effects, but she didn't tell him, so... As far as he knows, it was like she got sick, and then she got better. Right, that makes sense. And then, and, and then he finds out that his kid has a similar... I mean, he thinks it's a sickness, right? And it's getting me in trouble in school, and it's tanking my grades, and and he can't really tell the truth to the school board, so he, he's lying to protect me all the time. And, and I mean, after school all day, when I get home, my outbursts are worse. But, but those are the only ones he sees, so maybe he thinks they're all like that. Sounds like anyone might be a little concerned about their kid's safety. You make him sound so fucking reasonable. He he could just talk to me about it, you know? He he doesn't have to shout the entire city down. I hear you, and I'm not trying to invalidate the way he makes you feel. I just think it may help you to be able to communicate better if you see where he's coming from. He's not an atypical. He doesn't know what having these abilities is like. He wasn't able to get information from the people treating your mother, and she didn't tell him about the full extent of the effects it continues to have on her life. I think maybe he's just worried about you, like any good parent would be, and doesn't have the tools to know how to talk about it with you. Yeah, and that's fine, Dr. Bright, but he doesn't have to take it out on me. He doesn't have to shout things at me like, why can't you just choose to be normal? Of course, Rory, we all have- I'm a kid! I'm in school and teachers don't like me! Other kids don't hang out with me because they think I'm some kind of fire freak! I'm doing my best every damn day, just trying not to burn the school down. It is not my job to explain to my dad that not everyone can just be normal like him. That it's not that easy. It's a part of me, and and he just wants to cut it out of me, and... and... Ah! Oh, fuck. No, no. Please, I'm sorry, Dr. Bright. Rory, take a deep breath. It's all right. You're right. Things are replaceable. Are you okay? Um... I'm fine. It's fine. I... I know I said that thing about things being replaceable, but every time I burn something of someone's, I still feel really bad. I know. That's a complicated thing, especially with the nature of atypicals not being exactly common knowledge. But this office is a safe space for you. I knew what I was getting into, and I came prepared. 
It's really okay. That's kind of how it felt. The night of the forest fire. Do you think you can tell me about it? I just... He wouldn't listen to me. He was lecturing me about something in school I don't even remember. I couldn't even open my mouth to speak without him shouting me down. And I could feel the pressure building. There wasn't time to call my mom to pick me up or anything. But I just had to get out of there. There was so much of that pressure in my head, I guess I wasn't thinking straight. I just ran out of the house and started making my way to her house. But it's like all the way on the other side of town. Right through a forest. And... Like, halfway there, I couldn't contain it anymore. It ripped its way out of me, Dr. Bright. The force of it, it, like, I couldn't control my arms. And when my head cleared, there was fire everywhere. Smoke in my eyes, I couldn't breathe. It was an accident. I didn't mean to burn the forest down. Like, try explaining that to a judge. I believe you. I know. I want to try something with you, if you're up for it. Um, yeah, okay. I borrowed this from a former colleague of mine. I think he's from the same kind of place where your mother's medication comes from. It's a device that can help some atypicals with fire-based abilities. They call it a, a, a pyroglobe. <laughs> really? Really. Now, I want you to hold it by these valves on either side. Press the silver knobs to the centers of your palms. Like this? Yes, just like that. Okay, close your eyes, hold it between your hands, take a deep breath, in, out, in, out, good. Now, I want you to feel out the pressure. Feel it in your mind and in your hands. Is it there? Yes, I feel it. Okay, good. I want you to follow the pressure. Focus on it. Keep breathing. Okay, when you feel ready, I want you to add your own will to that pressure. Instead of trying to contain it, I want you to use it. Do you think you can? I can try. I did it! That was cool! Good. Okay, let's try again. Deep breaths. One. Two. Three. <sighs> Good. Again. Wow, that was really cool, Dr. Bright. I feel... Wow, I feel amazing. Are you tired? Exhausted, but so worth it. Wow, do you, do you think, I mean, do you think I could take the pyroglobe home with me? I think my engineer friend would kill me if I let it out of my sight. But I'll talk to him and see if we can make you one of your own. That would be so cool. Wow. So, Rory, think you'll be back next week? Yes, definitely. I'll see you next week. Thanks, Dr. Bright. Well, 
Maybe I am getting the hang of this. The patient wants to seek a practical solution to containing and controlling their ability without medication, as well as finding ways to get to places where outbursts can happen safely in a hurry. Oh, we may need to work on techniques for rephrasing that need so that it remains palatable to the wider world, as well as improving communication between the patient and her father. It may be worth bringing the father in for a supplemental session, but uh, oh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Additionally, a note to myself to check in with Green. There was no mention of an atypical mother with another Class B ability anywhere in the paperwork they sent me. The patient was born in an AM hospital, for God's sake. I should have... They should have told me. I don't much care for being handled. HelloFresh has a special offer for 2019. Get $80 off your first month by going to HelloFresh.com slash Therapy80 and use the code Therapy80. HelloFresh makes conquering the kitchen in 2019 a reality with deliciously simple recipes. Spend less time meal planning and grocery shopping so you can get that time back to do more of what you love. Get out of that recipe rut and start cooking outside of your comfort zone by discovering new delicious recipes. Recently, I made Mediterranean grilled veggies for the ARCS team and it was so easy, healthy, and delicious. The perfect fuel for a D&D session. Take advantage of HelloFresh's special offer for 2019. Get $80 off your first month by going to HelloFresh.com slash Therapy80 and use the code Therapy80. The Bright Sessions was created by me, Lauren Chippen. Julia Morizawa is the voice of Dr. Bright, and Sammy Lappin was the voice of Rory. This episode was written and sound designed by Misha Stanton and edited and directed by myself alongside Misha. All our music is composed and performed by Evan Cunningham, and our psychological consultant is Elizabeth Laird. If you'd like to support The Bright Sessions and help us make more podcasts, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash Lauren Shippen. Our next bonus episode will be coming out on February 18th. Until then, thanks for listening and stay strange. Stay strange.